Hey, spring is here and we're making some bold statements in the garden. All coming up next. I'm Alan Smith, welcome to the show. Isn't it great when spring arrives? All these flowers coming up everywhere, and I love to cut some and bring them in the house every chance I get. And tulips, what could be better? In today's show, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about how to keep these gorgeous tulips once cut and brought in the house where they'll last much longer. We're also gonna take a look at some beautiful new shrubs. In fact, we're gonna take a trip to Michigan to look at some of the best for summer flowering. Then we'll take a trip to Denver, Colorado, where I had a chance to visit a beautiful garden center and a chat with the owner about tulip bulbs and how to make the most of them. Also, recently I discovered some unwanted pests in my greenhouse, and I'll share with you how I kick them out. And this delicious recipe, it's so easy to make. As you can see, we've got a lot going on in today's show, and we'll get started right after this. Now that it's spring, it's the perfect time to begin thinking about making some changes in the garden, creating some bold statements. Now is a great time to go to nurseries and find a wonderful selection of shrubs. I recently went to Michigan to visit Spring Meadow Nurseries. Now the president, Dale Deppy, has a thing for new and exciting shrubs. He really has passion for them. One thing that really excites me about gardening in the summertime is the great color that hydrangea paniculata pinky winky brings into the garden. So right now you can see that the flower is fully white, but in a few weeks now it will be pink on the bottom and white on the top. Another great summer flowering plant is Caryopteris sunshine blue. I like it because it's great in containers and it's great in the ground as well. It's got golden foliage and blue flowers that flower in late summer. It's, it's low maintenance and easy to grow in the garden. Another low maintenance plant is Buddleia Lo and Behold Blue Chip. It's great with butterflies, looks wonderful in a container, and grows well in beds, and it flowers all summer long. And the blue flowers are really intense, and it's a great new addition to the Buddleia family. Another great garden plant for summer flowering is Hydrangea Incredible. It's wonderful because you can come out to the garden and cut some great flowers. Incredible is an easy to grow plant. It flowers every year. It just ties together your garden with this wonderful white color. So plan ahead and remember to plant some great summer flowering shrubs. Now after the break, I wanna give you a few tips on these fresh cut tulips. We'll take a trip to Denver, Colorado, so stay with us. Okay, now let's talk tulips for just a moment. Isn't this a beautiful flower? My goodness, the simplicity of them, well, they're just outstanding. It's amazing to me that you can take a bag of bulbs like this, plant them in the fall, and get such exquisite beauty. They're just amazing. Now, I wanna give you some ideas on how to make them last longer. After you bring them in from the garden, or if you pick them up at the store, what you wanna do is you wanna cut the bottom of the stem off, just like I did here, you see and you want to do it at a slight angle. And then place the tulips directly in fresh water. Now I learned from a Dutch florist a long time ago, I said, what's your secret to making tulips last longer? And she said, I do nothing but use clean water. Now what this means is once a day, if you'll take the time to just lift out the bouquet and throw the water out and add fresh water, this will keep bacteria from building up in the water. See, tulips love to drink lots of water. So you wanna make sure that the bacteria does not clog up its ability to take that water up, all right? You also wanna keep as much foliage as you can out of the water. This goes with any kind of flower you might want to arrange. The other thing you'll wanna do is you wanna keep your tulip arrangement, or even if it's a single stem, away from direct sources of light and heat. This will cause the blooms to open and close and you'll cut down on the number of days you can enjoy them. You see, if you cut them in the early morning, which I like to do, bring them inside, 
And if you cut them when they're just beginning to show some color, they'll last up to eight to 10 days in the house, provided you keep them away, like I said, from direct sunlight. I just think it's a marvelous thing to grow tulips. They're so easy and so rewarding. Okay, now let's turn from arranging tulips to planting them. Back in the fall, I took a trip to Denver, Colorado, where I met the owner of City Floral Garden Center, Candace Wickstrom. We had a great time preparing a giant container full of tulip bulbs. I'm here at City Floral with Candace, and we're just about to pot up a major container of tulips. How's it going, Candace? Good, how are you? I'm doing really well. You've got a beautiful place here. Thank you. Well, you know, what I love are what I call singular sensations, where you take one variety of tulip and just pack them in. And you know, if you say, I don't have time to garden, that's just nuts because this takes literally minutes to put together. They're basically four ingredients. That's right. You have the container, the soil, the bulb, and some water. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> How easy could that be? That's right. You know, I've used uh, various size containers and packed as many as 75 bulbs, such as marine, a white one, in containers, and menton, which you have here, I see. We just take the bulbs and start layering them in the container. Now, here in Colorado, uh, you know, it's a colder climate, and we do yeah. get worried about Sure. the bulbs freezing in a container. We try to leave a little bit of room, maybe a few inches along the edge of the container. So that serves as a little bit of insulation. Right, exactly. Yeah, great. So even though we're going to do some things to protect it, uh, about six inches deep, you want to plant the bulbs. Of course, always the pointed side up. Actually want to plant the flat side towards the outside. The first leaf of the tulip is gonna come out of the flat side and just pack them in as close as you can get without their edges touching. Yeah. We like to leave just a little bit of space so that the bulbs don't freeze and rot out touching for that spectacular show of color in the spring. Once we put this layer in, we'll cover it with about three inches of the potting soil and then do another layer. And you can do it uh, just as we are here today with uh, just tulips for that massive impact or you can layer with other bulbs such as crocus or muscari or any of those. Now what we have here, it looks like about 24 bulbs in a circle spaced as directed. This is the easiest way I've ever grown tulips. It's so rodent proof and the spectacular display, you can have it so close to your house or your entryway. It's really quite quite beautiful. Okay, so we have the, these layered, and the next stage would be to uh, add more soil. Now, I like to cover this with pansies or violas. Oh, that's a nice compliment. Yeah, yeah, and then the tulips come right up through. Now, I know a lot of people are concerned, how do all those bulbs come through? They just do. Now tell me a little bit about frost protection. What are some other ways you would give protection to containers? You can get some bales of straw, yeah. which you can usually find at a garden center, sure. and you know, put bales around the edges and then open up a bale and pack it around yeah. the outside. And, and the top as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So you can insulate that way. We did a singular sensation here with Minton, which will explode. Uh, but you could mix them all up if you like. You sure could. You could do a mix of, uh, of various colors of tulips and early, mid, and late. You sure could. Yeah. Extend the life of your container. Very good. Candace, thank you so much. Thank you. It's a joy being here at City Floral. Nice to have you. Okay, now after the break, we'll see what's invaded my greenhouse and a little later, this delicious recipe. Now take a look at this little guy. This is a bat face kufia. And this variety is called Totally Tempted. It has non-stop bright red blooms like this all throughout the summer. It can make explosive impact in hanging baskets, beds, borders, or in any combination. Totally Tempted works best in full sun, so remember that. Now you may look at these flowers and may think this is a delicate plant. It's a real toughy, so give it a try. I can't tell you how much I enjoy being out here in my little greenhouse during the winter. While the garden is certainly dressed in its winter clothes, in here, it feels like perpetual spring, and my house plants are thriving. Well, sort of. I just discovered some of my little pepper plants that I tried to hold over from late summer and fall are infested with spider mites. Now, this is a little insidious creature that you need to be aware of, particularly during the winter months with your house plants. It's particularly prone to get into plants like this beautiful ivy. Any of the ivies you might have in your house, you should check them now for spider mites. 
They're tiny little insects that create a web-like structure, hence the name spider mite. Because you see, they love the dry conditions. In the house, it's dry. Uh, the soil gets a little dry and they just jump out everywhere. They love my little needlepoint ivy, as you can see here. And I love this thing because, well, you know, it's got beautiful variegated foliage and it grows with very little care. If you're spraying it, you want to get on the underside of the leaf because that's where they love to hang out. Now, what I like to do is just saturate the leaves like this. And doing it out here in the greenhouse, I don't have to worry about the spray getting on anything in the house. And the other thing that's good about using a safe product is that with this insecticide, I don't have to worry about breathing the fumes, which is really important to me. Well, for a lot of reasons, but one is that I'm in this small contained greenhouse. So you want to be careful what you use. This is an organic product. Just a little winter tip for some of your favorite house plants. Now it's time to answer viewer questions, one of my favorite parts of the show. If you have questions about your garden, just email me at pallensmith.com. Now today, we have a question from Gabrielle in Tulsa. And she says, Alan, I'm planning to plant some Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, and broccoli. I'd like to know when I should plant them in the ground. I'd like to start them now, but I'm not sure it's too early and if the frost will kill them. Thanks for your time. Now, Gabrielle, some vegetables can take it really cold, okay? And you can start early. So it's really about where you live, how cold it is, and the vegetables you select. For instance, you're off to the right track with these cold tolerant vegetables, such as broccoli and Brussels sprouts. In fact, you can even add to that list. You could add cabbage, collards, kale, lettuce, spinach. Now, what I like to do is I typically buy these seedlings in six packs that have already been started. It's much more convenient than starting them from seed. However, there are some exceptions, such as spinach, some types of lettuce, and arugula. I sow those directly in the ground. Now, don't want to mislead you. Even though many of these vegetables are regarded as cold tolerant, they all can be wiped out if we have a sudden severe drop in temperature. You see, a cold snap can get them. So to help them along, I plant my early spring crops in raised beds. You see, by raising the soil, the temperature warms up just a bit earlier in the spring, and I can cover them easily with some sort of protective covering overnight. Something like newspapers, old sheets, but I really like frost blankets. Just remember to remove the covering the next morning. Now, Gabrielle, I hope that's helpful to you. You'd be surprised at how much cold some of these vegetables can really take. So good luck. Now, when we come back, I'll meet you in the kitchen for a delicious recipe that's so easy to put together. I love it when asparagus season comes around because there's nothing more delicious than this perennial vegetable. We grow several varieties here at the farm, one called Atlas, another one called Purple Passion, and then one called UC-157, which isn't a very sexy name, but the yield is tremendous. I can always count on it producing lots of asparagus for me in the spring. Now, if you want to grow asparagus, you have to have a certain level of patience. You see, the young crowns are planted, usually two-year-old crowns. In the first year, you typically don't harvest many of the spears. The idea is to get the plants established. Then in that third growing season, once they've been in the ground, or the fourth year, that's when you can really go out and harvest lots of asparagus. Here, we gather asparagus for about eight to 10 weeks in the spring. You see, I like to cut them when the spears are about eight to 10 inches long. And what you wanna do is you wanna go in and cut right at the base. And you wanna be careful not to cut any new emerging spears. And what's marvelous about asparagus, you have to go out every day and watch because it just erupts out of the ground. Now, what I have here is a very simple recipe using that UC-157. UC stands for the University of California. And what I'm starting with is about a pound and a half of asparagus, and I'm dropping it into some uh, boiling water just to blanch it for about, oh, a minute. This is a simple, nibble that you can create for folks while they're standing around talking with a glass of wine. And I want to show you this very easy to prepare sauce that goes with it. Now, what I have here is one cup of mayonnaise. 
And I'm simply going to add to that a tablespoon of French mustard, Dijon mustard. You can see there. You can see this is going to be very creamy. And then two tablespoons of horseradish. Now this gives it a real kick. Perfect for the spring. And then some parsley. And um, you can use flat leaf Italian or curly. And what I've done here is use some curly. And there's two tablespoons of that fresh. And all you do is simply mix all of this together like this. And you can put it in the fridge and bring it out just before guests. And I'll tell you, they will love it. It's the easiest thing you've ever made in your life. Now, I don't like to cook my asparagus too long. Um, I like a little crunch, and I think we're fine here. So what I'm gonna do is remove this immediately into some cold water, and that will keep it from cooking. I actually added a little ice in there to make sure it was very cool, and it'll have the most beautiful green color. Lay it all into the pan, all at the same, ends all of the same. And I'll pat this dry, add the sauce into a nice attractive bowl, and there you have a lovely snack for people to have while supper's being prepared. Well, that's all the time we have for today's show. If you're driving around and you have tulip envy, remember, in the fall, plant some of them. They're so easy to grow. If there's anything in today's show that you think you may have missed, you can find it on my website, pallensmith.com. Until next time, from the garden, I'm Alan Smith. In this garden I dream of a bed of flowers, bluebirds sing of the beauty all around us and every time the sun comes out I can't help but smile oh no I can't help but smile